Okay. Um, uh, love in relationships. People say a lot that it doesn't exist. What would you say from your practice? What you have seen? Love exists? Yes, uh, it does. Uh, I, I think you might be referring to some sort of uh, uh, idea, love, or some sort of romantic love. But people, they, they do, they do seek love, even men. Uh, I know that women, they uh, here in Cyprus, I hear a lot that uh, women, they don't find the appropriate men, but, uh, uh, you know, men, they tell me the same thing, that they don't find the <laughs> women to, to love them back. Uh, yes, they do believe in love. They, I think the, the, the matter is uh, how to to approach it's the each fear. other. It's it's fear, but it's it's not a matter for everybody. It's it's very delicate matters. And uh, what I hear in my practice, in the process, is that uh, through elaborating our own truths and elaborating our symptoms and our way uh, we are. We learn what is uh, important in these uh, spheres, in these areas, in the romantic area, what is important and specific to us. Uh, because many times we, we go for, for partners, men or women, that we supposedly love or we think it's the idea for us, and they are not. So... What is mistake? most often people do? Yeah, sometimes we have to go through a, a journey you know, to discover the man or the woman or the person that we are. But in this matters of love, you know, Freud uh, has very nice uh, essays on these topics. But let's, let's stay with the practice of analysis. When people speak in the sessions about the failures, of love, it's they discover what is specific, what is uh, what is for them. They try to understand what is good for them, uh, and those failures in the spheres of love, uh, they teach us in the best case scenario uh, what is for us and what is not for us. So what you're saying is that most of people they don't really know. What yes. they want, yes, or what's yes. good for them. Yes, uh, most of the times we we refer and we identify with ideas, mm -hmm. how we should love, uh, what we should love, uh, in what way we should approach each other, and uh, these things are are true on the universal level, but on the personal individual level, we have to discover. We have to discover how we love and how we allow ourselves to be loved by the other person. And uh, we, we cannot learn these things through books or through marketing or through the universal idea of love. These are fantasies. Okay? And also we have our own fantasies of being loved, uh, maybe referring back to uh, how we were loved by our, our parents. Uh, there are people who, who experience in their childhood uh, intimacy between their parents was uh, shouting or very intense silence. Actually, the, the two bodies between the mother and the father, they were touched, they touched each other in this intimate way. It was their sex. Uh, so when these girls, with this girl, she was, she was raised and then had relationships. She was seeking that. She was seeking tension with her relationship. That was her sex. So there, there was the idea of love for this woman. When she was talking and she was saying uh, that, uh, you know, people after six months, they shouldn't hold hands. Or people after six months, uh, she had this six months or a year and uh, because the experience she had in the family was like that, that uh, she never saw her parents kissing or she never saw her parents. The bodies were there just to shout, 
and uh, of being sad to be silent. So when uh, so that's that's one dimension of how we form mm -hmm. relationships. That was an example of a, a sexual relationship. How would that affect, let's say, such a kind of relationship? Would that affect um, their child? Would child feel uh, maybe if there is lack of love or anything, it's something that it's unspoken? Uh, yeah, these things, uh, they influence the, the, the kids, but uh, as an analyst, I would say that we always, we don't know how, like some psychologist or whatever, whoever says that, uh, I think somebody says, bring me the kids and I will tell you how they will become. This is not only wrong, it's stupid. Because we know that the past influence the kids or influence the, the future uh, only after hand. Only when somebody comes to analysis, we know how the, his past or her past influence him or her. But we cannot predict uh, how these experiences will form the future of the child. Mm -hmm. okay. Because in this, because life, the life of the child includes um, the child's own decisions as well, and it's not just a linearity with this. There are other aspects as well. Now, when you mention, uh, when you mention, you said the word decision, uh, it leads me to a different question. Uh, most of us we blame others for our lives. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Maybe my father. Uh, that I didn't study or something. Yes. Uh, how do we deal with that? Is it our fault? Is it someone else's okay. fault? That's, that's a very good question actually. That, uh, you give me the opportunity to bring in mind the uh, one of the differences of Lacanian psychoanalysis with other orientations, psychologists or psychoanalysis. It's uh, our orientation of Lacanian psychoanalysis does not stop at the identification so of the father and the mother. It's not about blaming the father or the mother. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of psychotherapists are not about that. Uh, that's a misconception. Uh, it's about what do I enjoy in my suffering? What do I enjoy? Isn't that a difficult question to face? Think. What do I enjoy in, in, let's say, if my husband beat me and I stay there, what do I enjoy and I stay there? Yeah, it's very difficult to face because I have to assume all the responsibility for my life. But that's the only way to proceed with life. Life teaches us that, that we have to assume and be responsible for our own life. That's uh, the position of Lacanian psychology, at least the position of the uh, official position of our school. I'm talking about the school of the Freudian letter. So basically we all have to face our own responsibilities. Towards uh, our own life. Well, it's a re responsibilities, yes, but uh, responsibilities on how to live. It's, it's simple. Sounds difficult. It is. It is, but not as difficult as uh, life itself. Um, I will ask one more personal question. People come to your office and. Uh, what they see around, uh, they find it scary. Yes. Um, and I think you have an interesting approach to uh, what is scary and why you have this here. I think you find it funny. You yes. mentioned something with a life. Uh, I think you said once that life is scary. Yes. Uh, uh, actually, when somebody comes to my office and they, they tell me that they are afraid of the waiting area because of the paintings or decorations, uh, I, I don't accept them for analysis. Uh, because uh, in my experience, uh, and so far I haven't been proven wrong, uh, these people, they have never been... Uh, uh, they never had it hard in their lives. So if somebody finds this office scary, so what can they say about life? Uh, so they are not ready for analysis. They are here just to complain. Uh, so 
Yeah. The office shouldn't scare you. 